Welcome. This is the Discovering Blue Hour Arthur Writing Podcast. On today's episode, we will explore Bitten Werewolf TV Show Review. So stay tuned. Welcome back, and you're listening to the Discovering the Blue Hour podcast. This is the author podcast where I will be talking about writing topics pertaining to my work in progress book during Blue Hour. So if you like learning about world building, character backstories, and POV, this is the place to listen to them. I took a break for a bit on the podcast, but now I'm back. The last podcast I explored was Francis' Werewolf Mythology. I'll be coming back to mythologies later because there are a lot more to talk about but this week i will be actually reviewing a tv show in their world but it is not an ordinary tv show it is a tv show about werewolves so let's begin the tv show entitled bitten is based on the other world series books by armstrong her about not only werewolves but witches and vampires as well. The series is right up my alley because I'm writing about werewolves but I I intentionally avoided the series because when I started writing my novel, my world novel back in 2008, I started working on my world novel series and I did not want to, to be influenced by her characters in world while writing mine. So. After all these years, and I have finally established my own world, my own werewolves, and how they function in my, my story, I figured that I decided to take the chance to delve into Armstrong's other world series. But I keep seeing it on my Amazon list, so. <laughs> but I have not yet read the first book, however, it is on my book list to purchase, and I have started to look at the TV series. From my research on the series, like most TV adaptations of books, the show is said to be widely different from the book series. So now on the, so I'm on the third season and I'm eager to already get ready to read the book after I complete watching the show. That's how good it is. Yeah, I intentionally did not read these books on purpose, even though I knew they were, were good. So let's see. The TV show's main character, as in the, the first book, is Elena Michaels, and, and she, as we find out through the first season, has been a werewolf for four years. She was bitten by her former fiancé, boyfriend Clay, who turned her for, I think, for, in my opinion, I think selfish reasons, and at the start of the season, we see her not with him due to her. I guess running away from him and the rest of the pack. The show gives the reason is because she killed someone and so she wants to lead a normal human life. So she goes to Ontario and she gets a human boyfriend, human friends. She becomes a photographer and she takes photos and has art gallery shows or whatnot. So she wants to try to live a human life. But a mysterious line of murders brings her back to the pack and these mysterious line of murders is not just any ordinary murders. It's it's a werewolf problem. It's a werewolf attacks and werewolf murders. So somebody in this in at the start of the season, somebody is turning serial killer killers and turning them, them into werewolves to kill humans and then putting them on her pack on her pack's problem. So um, they're doing that on purpose. So let me before I go into um, giving my opinion about it, they also, so the characters, it's her, she's the main character, Elena Michaels, and then her boyfriend, Clay Danvers, he, who was adopted by Jeremy Danvers. And the other pack members is Antonio Sorrentos, and then there is Nick, his son, and then there's Peter, and then there's Logan. So that's their pack. 
and they and Jeremy he's even in charge of the um, North American pack and it's really cool so I'll explain like how like in my opinion why I think these like how they did it, it was pretty interesting and, um, and this is one of the reasons why I can't wait to read the books that's like the characters in the first season um, in part of the pack so basically what do I think about this so as far as I'm not as far as right now because I'm not finished with the TV series well I'm in the third and last season and I, I feel like the show is coming full circle Everything that surrounded Elena, the main character, at the beginning of the series of how she felt and what she went through is making a lot of sense now in the third season, and I kind of like it. The reason why I say that is because at the beginning of the season, it felt, it like, it took me a couple of days to um, actually sit and finish the first episode because it was very slow, and I, and then, I had a problem with this when I was writing like spec uh, TV shows in, in, in college. What happened was they introduced so many characters within the first five, 10 minutes. Like they introduced the whole, all the pack members and it was like, it was like, it was slow yet it was too fast and it went by like too fast. And I was like, okay, n n not understanding. So, and that could have been a problem but I mean, once I got into the season, the like once I got into the episodes, I started watching it really like I started understanding each of the characters and understanding like what happened. Like some characters that was part of the pack died off within the first or second episode. And that was like, I'm like, oh man, he wasn't part of the, he wasn't, he's not gonna be part of the se season. Like I like these certain characters. Uh, so, but I, all in all, I kind of liked it um, now that I'm in the third season. The second season brought the arrival of witches. I like a good witch tale. However, I did not like this one within the TV series. It happened so abruptly and the story of the witches within the series compared to the werewolves were all over the place. I felt like it intruded on the werewolf tale itself. The main storyline, the main witch storyline didn't make sense and then it just ended. So there, the reason why I say that it was, okay, so at the end of the first season, there was Malcolm, the one who killed the serial kill, uh, turned the serial killers um, into werewolves. And he, well, he's he's the father of Jeremy and he was trying to take over the North American pack uh, from Jeremy. So he killed a lot of people. And so he left a lot of death and carnage in his way. Well, at the end of season one, Elena's human boyfriend, he killed Elena's human boyfriend, left, left Elena's human boyfriend on her bed. At the beginning of the season two, they got Malcolm, they chased him down, got him. But the thing is, the witches want him. And so, and why they want him is a little evasive. So, and it was weird because after they got him, they recaptured him and Elena finally like killed him. That storyline of why they wanted him, it was weird. So, and then they kidnapped Elena and then all just because of like a werewolf's blood, they wanted to test him. But then he was a, he, the thing about that is he was a, a regular werewolf, just like any other werewolf they, they had. But it, and it was weird because they was like, oh, he was the strongest. But then Elena, he, the witch saw Elena, the, the main villain witch saw Elena. He was like, well, you're the strongest. I'm going to kidnap you. And it was weird. The storylines of the witch was also weird because it was, I don't know, really, I still to this day don't really know why they needed the werewolf blood to, to inject it into the little girl's witch 
blood, I don't know, mix it up because to, they, they gave the, the reasoning to end the witch line, to end the kill the witches, but it just, the way they presented it did not make sense. So I didn't, and maybe I just didn't like it. It just, it just messed up like the intrusion of like the werewolves, like this, this bitten was supposed to be a, strictly about the werewolves, but I didn't understand that, you know, so. I didn't, I just didn't like it. And I just, I just didn't like how it just ended, you know, so, and their explanations. And now I'm on the season three and it's gone back to similar to what season one was like. So I, I kind of like it. But the books I've, I've been told, like the books, I looked at like the website and like the different books in the other world series. And it goes back and forth from like the main character in the books being Elena to the witch's characters. And I'm and I'm trying to see if I, once I read the book series, will I be into the witch characters? If I wasn't into like the witch, witch characters on the TV show, I didn't like, I didn't like them. I like all the werewolf characters, but I, the, yeah, all the werewolf characters except for the witch characters, I didn't like them. I didn't too much care for the witch characters. I'm like interested to see whether or not I would like them once I read the book. My favorite points within the series, the TV show, is I like how the story itself concentrated on the pack and the structure of the werewolves. Werewolf packs? It concentrated on two structured werewolf types, pack members and mutts. I like that and how they structured it because uh, it was pretty interesting. And also, like, and then they, they have like a council of werewolves and which like in my novel, I have a council of werewolves, but it's completely different. And, but I like how they did like the, um, the North American werewolves and stuff like that. So it was pretty interesting. And I like how like there was these like rogue werewolves that they called mutts that they had to stop and, and, and try to convert to their pack or to either get them or if they're not going to do away with them, you know, because they were harmful to their uh, existence. So I like that. I like their wolf transformations and how they fully turned into, turned into a wolf. So I like that because in my novel, I have, I have my wolf, werewolves fully turning into these big wolves too. And I can't wait to like read and see how her descriptions are. I'm, it'll be, it'll be interesting to see because I liked how they did that. And I liked that they were trained in human form for combat and the fight seemed to be fairly reasonable for a werewolf in its human form. So I liked that as well. And it was pretty interesting. And then I think that is an important to have, like the werewolves knowing how to be like, know how to do combat in the human form. Also, because if they can't transition into their werewolf form, and in the minute they can, can like defend themselves in their human form, and that's important too. I like how they they had a lot of like like regular moments. Like they had a lot of moments that actually like before the fighting happened to like breathe and have their free, free moments with each other and everything. I like that. Okay, so my most disappointed points in the series is 
I didn't like how any and all humans were killed if they knew the secret of the world. I'll go in depth with that in a little bit, but yeah, I didn't like that. I think, I, I feel like maybe a couple of humans should have known, like, come on, like, kill every single human. But I'm gonna go in depth with that in a few minutes. I, I didn't like how the world with fathers had to steal the newborn male child away from the mother or either kill them. I didn't like that either. That was kind of weird. So my most confused moments though was Elena's storyline that included that she was the only female werewolf in the whole world and none of the women who were bitten before Elena's never saw it. Okay, so with this, apparently there's no women in the pack. No women are allowed to come in the pack because I mean, they probably are, but the, the thing is they supposedly didn't do transformations. They would die from the, the because of how they transfer, you know, transitioned into the, the, the werewolf. But season three clears my confusion up about the stat storyline. However, I feel like the characters don't take notice that the reason why she changed into a werewolf when first bitten by Clay in the first season is because she was born by a werewolf father, but then, but then bitten. So I'm thinking maybe was what was supposed to happen was that there would finally be women in the packs, you know, be part of the packs. Maybe they had to be born from the werewolf fathers in order to be able to serve, but they never went deeper into that. So that, that storyline, uh, all was kind of lost. I mean, and it would have cleared up a lot of sad moments, but I don't know, maybe they just don't want, they didn't want to take that risk of fighting the women, you know? I don't know, because they were afraid that they would die. I don't know. But yeah. Um, another thing was two humans who found, find out about werewolves. That confused, that's, that type of storyline confused me a lot. Because, okay, I kind of understand why some humans might be killed because they might use the secret against the werewolves. However, they didn't even give humans a chance to decide whether or not they were on their, their side before killing them. An example of that would be Journey the Elf of Elena's Pack wanting to kill Elena when she was human because he thought she saw him change from the werewolf. That was weird too. I'm like, and it made me want to hate Jeremy. And, and this is what really made me like despise the Jeremy character. He killed Karen Morgan, the former sheriff of Bear Valley. And like, if you look at other supernatural shows, like you see like in every supernatural show, like Vampire Diaries, the original, it's always the the sheriffs that know the the, the supernatural secret, you know? And I'm like, really dude you had to kill the sheriff and he i mean he was going to let her go but then she started to talk about what she saw which was elena's brother turning into a werewolf and then she was like okay oh wow and then she was like oh you're a werewolf too and you could see like this it was like this shock on her face you know and and like oh like maybe like a shock maybe trying to get wrap her head around it but the Jeremy character, the alpha, he never gave her a chance to like, like get a clear understanding of it. Like, dude, like give her a couple of days. But that never came to like fruition. Like, it was just weird that he would do that. And I like, I totally hated Jeremy for that. Like, and I just didn't understand the writer's concept to like do that, to kill off the human. Um, I was just I was just feeling like maybe if she was just given a couple of days, cause they had this like little flirtatious thing throughout the seasons, like season one, like Jeremy and her flirted throughout the whole season and in season three they flirted, but then he like, boom, kills her. Like he could have tried to trust her. I mean, he just did not care. He was like, it got me, yeah. And then like, she said, he did say before she died that she was going to keep a secret of the worlds. Like she did, even though she was shocked at that moment and was like coming, like it was coming around. She was like, I'm gonna keep your secret, you know? But it, it just, it was just like, he didn't care. I tried to like him, I'm sorry. But I mean, Alina showed 
herself to Philip and and he kept the secret like her um her human boyfriend Philip that um his um that Jeremy's father Malcolm killed he was keeping her secret they actually had to like send him away but he was gonna keep her secret and Elena respected that and you know but and then Antonio before he died like before, like this was off screen apparently he changed in front of his wife but she knew and then like she knew what him and his son was like her son he, she knew that they were werewolves and and she kept her their secret for a very long time but the, i think the only reason why she survived the series is because jeremy never found out <laughs> I, I'm, I'm honest to God, like, no alphas never found out. And I think, like, Antonio and them kept those secrets for a reason. And I just I just felt like the reason they gave for killing the humans who found out were kind of weak. And I was like, I didn't like that storyline. I didn't like, like, let a couple of humans know your plans, like, you know, who you are. So you could get help from them. But no. He was just killing humans left and right because he just was like, oh, this is the law. And I understand, like, I have a law for the alphas in my novel, too. I understand, like, like that's the law for her, not, you know, her story. But, like, it was just, that's like a strict-ass law, you know? So, I don't, I don't know. I was, like, I was confounded by it. I was like, I didn't really... You know, but all in all, it was a reasonable, I feel like it was a reasonable series and it has, it has led me to delve deeper and actually, I want to read the books. I want to see like if my favorite characters survived in the books too. But like some of the characters, I did not like Jeremy. Like once again, I did not like, like I wanted to like Jeremy. He was, he was cool. I thought he would have been a cool, he was a cool alpha, you know? But nah, he, and then the reason they gave behind like biting Elena, and I'm like, that's such a weak reasoning behind biting Elena and like Clay biting her. Like he, in this episode, and like the reason like they showed him when they, first, when they showed Elena biting, like him biting Elena and like he, he appeared, showed her himself as the wolf. And she was like, oh, what a cute dog, right? She just thought he was like an oversized dog. And he just came up to her and she was petting him and she just, he just bit her, right? And I'm like, she was like, you know, what's going on, you know? And it was so funny. But, and then she changed and I'm like, he, the reason why she was mad at him was like, that reason was weak too. Like, it took her a long time. So they, they had to lie and say it was his fault, but it was really Jeremy's fault because Jeremy was going to kill her and then she was mad at Jeremy after she was a werewolf for four years after finding out that he was going to actually kill her as a human. I was like, but get over it. You're, you're a werewolf now. Okay, he was going to kill you. That's their law. You know, if that, that's their law that they have to kill humans. I mean, Clay was trying to help you. Clay saved you, you know? So I don't know, but then her father was telling her, you know, no, don't be mad at Clay. Clay was just trying to help you, you know. So I was like, or Jeremy, don't be, but he was telling her, don't be mad at Jeremy, you know, cause that was the law of the, like the alphas. And so then she finally understood, but I'm like, she took that long to like forgive Jeremy. And that was, it was, it was weird. Like, you know, I liked the episode, you know. Another thing I didn't like was that I feel like they were weak uh, werewolves. I feel like they were, they're weak. Like when they, okay, say, okay, say they injured themselves, right? They didn't heal automatically. Like they, it would take them a while to heal. And then like, they would need like bandages and everything in their human form. You, you would think if they're werewolves, they'll heal right up. And I, I didn't like that. I was like, they're so weak, why are they weak? But they're fighting and their combat skills was like, like spot, like spot on. So yeah, I mean, it was like, yeah.
with my book, with my world, I do stuff similar, but not all together. Like my world, my my world of novel, the it's they're on a totally like parallel planet, different type of planet. They're not even on Earth. They're on a different planet, similar to Earth, but not Earth. And then they do have a council, but the council is corrupted. This is my novel. So the, the council is corrupted in my novel. And then they have different packs, but all the packs are primarily together because they want to help each other. So unless they go rogue, but I don't know. But they can, they, they're good in, they're also good in combat too. And that's one of the things that I liked about her, her, her the, the TV show in the series and hopefully the book, the combat was really good. So, and in, in my novel, I had, I have them like being good in combat in their human form as well. But they also have like these powers, these celestial powers, not from witches. I don't have witches in my novel and I don't, um, I have shaman and healers, but not witches they don't have they don't really have magical powers yeah that's i mean it was pretty solid i liked it and it's, it's somewhere in a way to my novel you know in a, a little bit but not not much but i'm glad that i did not read it when i when i did when i wanted to going back and reading these novels and everything to see what you know what other writers did I feel like it was a reasonable series. I mean, yeah, it could have been better like here and there. I feel like season two was kind of a waste. Maybe they could have done a different storyline with season two, a different direction in a way, but I don't know. Like, yeah, I know like the with the bit and it was only like with the werewolves, even though the first book is uh, based on the actual like, pack and everything i think it's only like three or four books that's based on the werewolf so maybe i don't know they didn't have enough storylines i don't know i'm gonna i'm gonna definitely delve into the books i want to know have you watched the tv show bitten have you read kelly armstrong's novel bitten have you read the other world series let me know in the comments below let's start a dialogue about it so if you like this episode and you want to tune in to next week's episode, I want you to like, follow, download, and share this episode. Discovering the Blue Hour podcast is now exclusively free, only on discoveringthebluehour.com. So I'm going to have a short story coming out soon, and it's a werewolf short story connected to the Blue Hour series. It's called In the Hour of Humanity. Please check that out. I want your feedback before I am put out the whole story. So it's on my website, discoveringthebluehour.com. I want to thank you for listening and I'll see you next time. Bye.